अभी जरा आपने बहुत अच्छा किया है बट एक पांच मिनट अलाउ करो ना जरा ओके 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 हेलो हेलो सर गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग या सॉरी Uh, sir how you will be comfortable uh, we have we got your presentation and myself and your uh, host he had uh, uh, both of them have uh, a presentation either uh, and we can allow you to screen uh, share the screen okay you just what i want to ask i can also based on this i can also forward uh, this one i can help you out so what uh, you will become you can forward it to my host host make me host and then put it across Uh, can uh, sorry sir can we uh, can we make you as a co-host or share the screen yeah, yeah, yeah. So when my lecture comes yes yeah that time we'll allow you to share the screen then you will be comfortable then that is sure sure is let, us see, let us see how that works yeah 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 okay sir. That, uh, you can be there i have also uh, i i will be definitely just not reading that i will be just text number on that points i will be yeah talking. and we both has uh, got the presentation on laptop so any time that uh, that will be available that's right okay sir so chetan uh, chetan chetan is not there i think chetan yes oh hello uh, am i audible ha uh, yeah chetan uh, you uh -huh. has you as a host you have also presentation so we'll uh, if there is any technical problem uh, this is you know will be always there see so you we can keep our ready see, you, you, no i have made you a co-host i have made the sir as a co-host also so he can even share his screen he can yes. even control but if he is not uh, comfortable with it uh, anybody any of one uh, any one of us can do that any one of us we will present and then done done so instead of sharing the screen uh, good that sir is any time you know you cannot uh, he can also start sharing the screen right 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 sir so i have made oh. him a uh, co-host also yes yes thank you no right thank welcome, you sir yeah. Uh, chetan now you can uh, whatever you that just i wanted to uh, say hello to sir so okay. if there is any disturbance as per this one you can go ahead uh, you can mute and uh, no 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 uh, now, now i think it is time uh, uh, for, uh, till what time we, i want to uh, means you want me to continue the music sir yeah you can continue the music uh, for some time and uh, you can just allow take all the till it get 70 75 the student after that after that only we'll uh, we'll uh, take it then on the
Manik sir, uh, tell me when to start. Huh? I'm waiting for your signal. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, I think another uh, three, four minutes. We'll wait for another five minutes. I think 37. We'll wait for another five minutes. I will, I will inform you. Yeah. Okay, sir. So I'll put on uh, again music. Uh, right? uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Girish, uh, uh, will uh, 37 are joined and from YouTube are also there. Uh, from uh, YouTube, I think there are some, they are joining in the process of 7, 10, I believe, Chetan. So, uh, we'll wait for yeah. another five minutes. Okay, Dr. Girish? Yeah. Uh, Chetan, we'll wait for another five minutes. Uh, okay. They are joining. Uh, there are nobody in waiting room, na, Chetan? No, no, no. Uh, all, all are admitted. There are nobody no one. in waiting oh. Right. Okay. Okay. All are. We'll wait for another... Uh, uh, five minutes. Right, right. I have unmuted Harish Bhai, so if uh, Dr. Harish can talk. Yeah. Yeah, so, sir, you want to say anything, uh, sir, Harish, sir? No, 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 it's all right. No problem, Chetan Bhai. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. So I unmute you all for five minutes and then uh, we'll start, okay? Okay, uh, okay. okay. Uh, yes, now it's already 5.40, so five minutes. Yeah, after five minutes, so we can start, yes. Okay. Thank you. 
to me. Yes, Manik sir. Yeah, you are unmuted. Yes. Okay. Uh, 
we can we can start now yes okay so we uh, shall, we shall start the ceremony yes yes okay okay uh, am i audible uh, chetan yeah yeah you're audible yeah sir. you are okay uh, good evening ladies and gentlemen uh this is good uh, it is a good to see you all get in touch with uh, after one month again uh it's a great uh, pleasure to welcome you all for uh, professor nr kamat memorial lecture and it is on academia industry research and consultancy uh, linkages in the context of the new education policy organized by uh, color society uh, i feel extremely uh, privileged to welcome uh, our honorable speaker professor v n rajeshekaran pillai uh, vice chancellor somaya vidya vihar university mumbai we all the color society members are thankful to him for taking time out of his busy schedule uh this today's lecture is available uh, on youtube also apart from zoom link and youtube engineers students uh, the chemist and uh, the you know all the researchers they are listening to this lecture so i request all of them uh, to if they can put on uh, mute for them so you know in between there should not be any disturbance and, and we can take the advantage of this lecture uh this lecture the color society initiated uh, that professor n r kamat memorial lecture series since 1984 to commemorate uh, the birthday of professor uh, n r kamat uh, which uh, sir falls on 8th uh, september and uh, coincidentally uh, this uh, professor n r kamat birthday falls on our international literacy day today is international literacy day and uh, for this lecture we invite a mini prominent uh, speaker from the uh, academic field in the past also uh, we have uh, color society organized this lecture uh, but many time uh, this lectures happens to be a weekends in the month of the september uh, but uh, considering the audience convenience, uh, convenience uh, which could have been deferred from his exact birth date but due to the current pandemic situation we get uh, we got an opportunity uh, to organize this memorial lecture on his birth date itself professor n r kamath was an outstanding teacher and uh, technologist who has a profound influence on his students he was a role model and a mentor of his era a teachers day happens to be on 5th september and today we all are reminding the memories of our uh, beloved teachers uh, professor n r kamath uh, today uh, we have uh, we are uh, very fortunate that we have a great speaker professor v n rajeshekaran uh, pillai sir who is working for the almost 50 years in this academic field as a teacher researcher a professor and shouldering a many other responsibility in the academic field and different fields and today we feel extraordinarily fortunate to have a speaker like this for this today's event today he will emphasize on academia industry linkages by infusing the industry based skills in the current education system to ensure the student get practical knowledge in how to match the theories and graduate with the broad view of the specialization and the expectation from the student that industrial expectation from the students what are the challenges that students are going to face when he is coming out of the colleges i know there are many challenges in indian research uh, department like they have uh, many time the spending on the research is very less compared to other uh, country if you see the balance sheet they are spending very less amount for the research and uh, we are uh, lagging behind in the basic research in the industries and many time when we start the research it's a uh, too late and uh, you know uh, we always uh, be you know last in the uh, the list 
so there are many challenges now the student who are coming out of the college uh, they have to face it and definitely the today the sir will emphasize how that you know the student and the, uh, how the colleges and uh, the uh, industry can come together to face these challenges sir the color society had thought on this subject a long back and uh, even color society started uh, this diploma course in uh, paint technology in the i think 40 years uh, before 80s uh, i think we have started the paint technology course and this facility is available for the student uh, sorry for the technograph who are working in the industries uh, like you know they are uh, after graduation they join the paint printing ink and allied industries they can join this course and uh, we are trying to minimize that how the interaction will uh, with the industry and the student will happen more and the color society bring this make this platform available so that you know the problems comes together then we can solve problems and we can bridge the gap which is there so the i will uh, encourage all the non members of the color so of here who are present to become the life member of the color society and uh, i request we work collaboratively to face the technological challenges as i mentioned the sir is going to tell that what are the you know the how what is the uh, today's requirement is a need of the hour that technology that the student technology is going to solve the or it will definitely help to face the challenges so it's a need of the world that you know how the college uh, uh, academic field and the industry can come together to address the issues what we are facing many time there are technological challenges that we don't have a sufficient infrastructure we don't have a sufficient funds we don't have a manpower we don't r&d many time they don't have a capability also the capability building and the infrastructure made up for that is the need of the our that academic field and the industry can come together now we cannot say that the it is a individual we can do it it's a collaboratively all together we have to make it so i request all uh, if there are non members available in this one that become a life member and uh, it is good that we have a color society uh, platform and there are many committee member who are uh, enrich their if you have knowledge in the field of paints raw material printing inks we in the committee itself we have uh, many technocrats who had knowledge of the additives uh, the paints inks applications and all so we can come together to face the tomorrow challenge we cannot say that the problems can be solved individually you have to come together to address the challenges i am uh, fortunate uh, to have the team uh, that committee member as well as uh, the you know that whatever it is that they are young from 30 years to the 90 years and i am very lucky, uh, lucky to have the such a great team and who is working uh, to reduce the gap they are going close to the uh, the student and industries and uh there in future also we are trying to address that what are the issues what uh, industries are facing and how we can um, make this platform available from uh, for them in fact i am happy to inform that uh, one of our committee member that secretary that uh, color society secretary professor mahanavar he had been appointed as a issues independent the director for idol uh is a open uh, and distance learning and we have also started the e learning diploma in paint technology course and uh, definitely his experience in this uh, field uh, will be you know getting the benefit out of that and i request even the student uh, from the industry who are availing this benefit of the paint technology course i request them to uh, take it because from here first time we have started this course Uh, for uh, you know not only in the mumbai because physically you know we have to attend the lecture from last year but from this year we have started this course for uh, who are you know all over the country they can take the admission for this course and you know uh, the you know how we can uh, go, go bridge the gap and how we can solve the problems uh, what we are facing collectively that was the thing behind this so uh, definitely uh, we are getting a good response uh, for this course and uh, i request all of them to join 
uh, many admission has been already started and all the information is available on the color society website uh i will not i will not take much time i once again uh, extend my hearty welcome to you all and uh, look forward to enlight enlightening and engaging this session uh, lastly i am thankful to you all and i am also congratulating uh, the student you know who had completed this last year and with the flying colors yesterday only we have declared the result of the last year diploma student and we'll be giving even the prizes with the you know the for the first second third uh, rank student also so lastly again uh, i ca congratulate them i'm thankful to you all for virtually attending this lecture this time you know we cannot able to physically meet and have a lecture but this uh, definitely because of this pandemic situation Uh, we are have a virtual lecture uh, for uh, this in our uh, kamath memorial lecture so thanks once again take care and uh, be healthy thank you thank you very much sir uh, i will uh, thanks uh, mr malik uh, sanunke sir uh, our honorary president for uh, their welcome address and now i will invite dr girish nagarkar our honorable vice president for memories of professor n r kamath please sir yes sir dr girish nagarkar yeah, yeah. Uh, am i audible yes sir yes good evening friends uh, colleagues from the industry and our today's honorable guest respected professor v n rajasekaran pillai it is my uh, privilege to uh, talk about the memories of professor nr kamath who is affectionately called nrk by one and all he was a man with diverse interests versatile in various fields be it polymer technology or chemical engineering history of technology kannada literature or technical education he was widely respected and admired by his colleagues and students alike nrk was an iconoclast and an institution on his own he had a profound influence on his students both at uh, bombay university and later when he joined iit bombay born on september 8 1914 narayan gangappa kamath hailed from mulki a small town on the banks of the river shambhavi near mangalore in south karnataka district of karnataka state he was the youngest of seven children five boys and two girls one of his sisters bhavani a school teacher and a remarkable woman had a profound influence on the formative years of her youngest uh, youngest brother's life professor nrk completed his early education in mulki and his sslc from government college in 1930 with high credits He, he could not get admission in the much coveted presidency plus <laughs> madras right no admission at that time was also dependent on religious considerations and young narayan despite his excellent results belonged to the wrong constituency he moved to st javier's college bombay where he completed the bsc course in 1934 with a unique distinction of securing 100% marks in chemistry friends this record was unequaled in the bombay university for the next 40 years the late professor enar kamath was an outstanding teacher and technologist he had a profound influence on his students first at the university department of chemical technology formerly called as udct and then at the indian institute of technology bombay professor kamath played a decisive role as an academician and administrator during the formative years of uh, growth not only uh, in the chemical engineering department but also uh, the institute as a as a founder of uh, founder head of the chemical engineering department he played a visionary role in setting the teaching and research ed agenda for the department he was a motivating force for both the faculty as well as students of the department throughout its stint as head from 1959 to 19 
During this long stint as the deputy director at the institute, he showed his administrative acumen by putting in place uh, processes for facile management of all academic activities across the campus. He was a role model and mentor to many of the young faculty and students of his era. On his retirement from IIT Mumbai, the 1974 issue of Technique described Professor Kamath. Professor Enak Kamath was known to student as iconoclast with a steady store of pointed jokes and covert wings. As head of chemical engineering, uh, his name became synonymous with the department. As deputy director academic, he was considered sympathetic towards students in academic deep waters, which ensured a steady stream of supplicants to his door. That means the flow of students who were willing to work uh, with him was always uh, there. It was a continuous flow of students. Uh, Professor NRK was a living example of all that stands for excel excellence of the first order in the academic profession. Not all teachers can be educators, but a select few who achieve that status uh, do so because they leave a permanent impression as mentors who inspire. In Professor Kamath's case, the ranks of those who he influenced encompass not just his students, but also his colleagues. So Professor M.R. Kamath was a great teacher and uh, was a great human being. Uh, thanks for listening, friends. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for a uh, great uh, introduction to our great professor uh, in, in a super Thank detail. You. Yeah. Now, okay. I welcome uh, Sri Prakash Dapre, sir, our honorary treasurer, for uh, introduction of speaker, Professor V. N. Rajshekharan Pillai. Please, sir, good Prakash, sir. Good evening, everyone. Are you audible? Yes. Hello? Yes, 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 sir. You are audible, sir. Good evening, everyone. Today, I have the privilege to introduce to everyone our guest, Professor V. N. Rajshekharan Pillai. Professor V. N. Rajshekharan Pillai is the Vice Chancellor of Somaya Vidya Vihar University and Pro Host of Somaya Vidya Vihar and Somaya Ayur Vihar under the Somaya Trust Mumbai. He has been at the helm of affairs of many higher educational and scientific research establishment for almost 50 years as a teacher, researcher, professor, and executive head of education, science, and technology establishment in the country and abroad. An elected fellow of the Indian Academy of Science, Professor Rasekhan Pillai is one among the top cited chemistry researcher in the country. He created an internationally renowned research group in the area of polymer science and about 60 doctoral and postdoctoral researchers have been trained under his direct supervision in the University of Kalikat, Mahatma Gandhi University, Kotiyam University of Tübingen and in the University of Mainz, Germany. He was also visiting research professor in the University of Lusani, Switzerland. The top executive position which Professor Pillai has occupied include the vice chairmanships and chairmanship of the University Grand Commission Government of India. He is the executive director of the National Assessment and Accreditation Council, Government of India. Also Vice Chancellor of the Indira Gandhi National Open University, Chairman of the Distinct Education Council, Government of India. Vice Chancellor of Mahatma Gandhi University, Kotiyam, Kerala. Vice Chancellor of Cochin University of Science and Technology, Kerala. Executive Vice President of the Kerala State Council for the Science, Technology and Environment. 
ex opico principal secretary of the department of science and technology government of kerala chairman of the kerala coastal zone management authority under the ministry of environment and forest government of india and chairman of the kerala biotechnology commissions after superannuation from the government of india and the government of kerala professor pilai worked as a president of the meva university chittorgarh and rajasthan he also working as a president of new delhi ncr based civil society organization human development foundation india since 2015 he is on the director board of the apollo group of hospital and on the board of several academic and research establishment in the country and abroad he is also serving as the chancellor of university tirupura icfei university tirupura and as its chairman board of governors before the start of the professor nr kamat memorial lectures my by professor vihan rajshekran pillai i would like to make an announcement as per our tradition we are giving award to the top rank students during today's professor nr kamat memorial lectures that has been going on for the last 25 years now i would like to announce the names of our top 3 rank students and request our speaker professor pilai to do the honors for the third rank we would like to present mr pratimesh waiti with the rank certificate as well as a cash award of rupees 1000 from color society and another cash award of rupees 3100 on behalf of lala lakshmandas agrawal education foundation trust for the third rank we would like to present mr pratimesh waiti sorry for the second rank we would like to present mr omkar chogle with the rank certificate as well as cash award of rupees 2000 from color society and another cash award of rupees 4100 on behalf of lala lakshmandas agrawal education foundation trust and lastly for the first rank we would like to present mr akshay patil with a rank certificate as well as cash award of rupees 3000 from color society and another cash award of rupees 5100 on behalf of lala lakshmandas agrawal education foundation trust i would like to congratulate all three of you for your outstanding achievement and now i would like to request professor v n rajshekran pillai to address the gathering thank you very much sir first of all let me congratulate the three students who have ranked top in the diploma in paint technology let me wish them very best let me also uh, congratulate the color society and the faculty who have trained them appropriately to gain this recognition i also take this opportunity to congratulate all the students who are undergoing this uh, practical training in paint technology uh, which is a very Uh, niche uh, technological area in uh, in the in the country and abroad my congratulations to all of you shri manik salunke honorary president of the color society mumbai dr girish nagarkar honorary vice president mr prakash kapare the treasurer uh, mr shri rohan tabare honorary joint secretary professor prakash mahanwar the honorary secretary of the color society distinguished members of the management committee and all members of the color society invite these ladies and gentlemen i have great pleasure in delivering the 
Professor N. R. Kamat Memorial Lecture 2020, organized by the Color Society, Mumbai. I thank the President and all office bearers of the Society for extending me an invitation to do this honor. I consider it a great privilege to deliver this lecture instituted in the memory of the great teacher, researcher, educator, and an institution builder, Professor Narayan Rangappa Kamats. Professor Nar Kamats was an outstanding teacher and technologist who had a profound influence on his students in the university departments of chemical technology, now ICE Institute of Chemical Technology, and the National Deemed University, and also uh, very, many years in the uh, in Indian Institute of Technology, Mumbai. Professor Kamath, as uh, introduced earlier, has played a decisive role as an academician and an administrator during the formative phases of not only of the chemical engineering departments there, but of the, of the Bombay University, the ICT, of course, the UDCT, now ICT, and also the uh, uh, chemical engineering department in Indian Institute of Technology, Mumbai. He has a distinguished, uh, he was a distinguished educator, and I'm extremely glad that this Memorial Lecture and the National Literacy Day happens to be on the same day. And uh, of course, now I am told that this is also the birthday of uh, Professor N. R. Kamath. And uh, let me uh, let me take this opportunity to pay me pay my tributes to this extraordinary uh, teacher, educator and institution builder for his contributions to education, for his contributions to technology, for, for his contributions to teaching and institution building in this country. I am also given to understand that uh, Professor N. R. Kamat is one of the founders of the Color Society, which was established in 1952, along with others he established. And it is very, uh, very befitting that the Color Society Mumbai is honoring uh, commemorating his uh, contributions every day by uh, conducting these memorial lectures uh, in, by inviting uh, people who are working in various fields of education, science, technology, and institution building. Uh, I have also seen the activities of the Color Society, even though I had no occasion to interact with uh, the society in a formal way, I have seen the activities of the Color Society, the, the capacity building, training, and also promotion of the industry in this area, uh, 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 providing capacity building and training for youngsters, and then interacting with education institutions. The diploma in paints technology is, is an example. And also now you are thinking of even providing online and distance education and capability, uh, distance education capabilities so that uh, the um, knowledge and skills in this area can be imparted to uh, not only those who are working in the field, maybe outsiders who are also interested to come into the this, uh, field of activity. And uh, of course, I have also uh, some sort of a personal uh, attraction to this particular color society. I, I was when I, I when I was invited, I was uh, in my reply letter. I informed that I started. Uh, with, uh, with the photochemistry of aso dyes, uh, photochemical discoloration of aso dyes. What, what, what are the chemical reactions happening in uh, uh, the photochemical fading of aso dyes in the 90, early 1970s? I, when I was doing PhD, I was looking at how uh, the, the dis discoloration occurs. What are the mechanisms? What is what is the type of uh, what is what is happening in UV? What is happening in ultraviolet? All these things. So. Uh, basically, I'm, tra I'm a trained photochemist, organic photochemist to start with, and then from there, photochemical polymerization, application of photochemical polymers into different, that is the type of, I mean, uh, what is that, uh, uh, knowledge growth, which I have. And so I have, I still feel, I remember my first publications in tetrahedron, or tetrahedron letters in organic chemistry journals are in the photochemical, uh, photochemical fading of aso dyes uh, and related uh, compounds. And from there, I moved over to uh, core photochemistry and such areas. Therefore, I consider it a great privilege and honor to be here again. 
today when of course i was invited for this lecture i thought about uh, of course i asked about the topic is they said that whatever is um, current i can talk uh, from my uh, probably by my brief introduction you might have uh, known that i have been a basically a teacher since 1971 1971 may i have been teaching in the university system in the country for 50 almost 50 years in the, uh, the, the university system i of course i have been uh, res uh, doing research guiding research and uh, uh, participating in policy making in the country at the state level national level and global level at different capacities even now i teach i also uh, quite interested in industry academia uh, joint activities after my joining in, in um, somaya vidya vihar university here as first as its provost of all the 34 institutions and now as the vice chancellor of this university uh, we have also started a joint industry academy a joint dot program joint dot industry academy a joint dot program on polymer science uh, which is uh, uh, 50% from industry and 50% from academia and the, the teachers so the design content creation everything is jointly even the declaration of the research everything is joint and that is that is ha happening in a very 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 effective way for the last uh, two two and a half years now so uh, i thought of the topic for example the research academia res uh, academia industry interactions research and knowledge transfer linkages and also uh, this was the topic then of course corona has suddenly of course just three weeks ago the national education policy also came into force i remember when this national education policy was uh, approved by the prime minister and the, on the very same very same day dr kasturi rangan was with us um, uh, to uh, for uh, discussing about uh, what uh, what is happening into science education and research experimental science education and research uh, in the in the covid scenario uh, we had a, i have organized a meeting with indian national science academy and several a few other organizations and dr kasturi rangan was incidentally the chief guest on that day it was announced and immediately after for um, the first public appearance of dr kasturi rangan was in our meeting and therefore he just narrated on national education policy and its context in science education that was the point he discussed on that particular day so i thought of connecting this uh, industry academia interaction research and knowledge transfer in the context of the national education policy we might have all uh, uh, can i can we sh uh, um, share now the the thing because share the share the transparency no oh, thank you so this is my uh, i mean uh, broad um, title academia industry research and consultancy linkages in the context of the national education policy india 2020 so um, maybe i can i can do it no okay can you can go to the next slide yeah yeah, yeah okay, okay. Yeah. so please go to the next oh thank you so uh, if you just look at academia industry research knowledge transfer if you examine top universities in the world we visualize five all pervading dimensions the research the teaching and learning knowledge transfer global orientation and industry engagement this is this these things for example now just few days ago the ranking annual ranking by the times uh, uh, education uh, supplement it came again look at all these universities big universities i will mean, elite universities they come on to the top because of maybe three areas research knowledge transfer and industry engagement how do they fare in these three areas that is that these are the things which are making them uh, uh, society relevant probably coming to the top and of course uh, the university of oxford of oxford continues to be on the top for several years and you can see the type of engagement industry engagement and research engagements which is happening in the top universities in the world uh, the, of course this particular aspect of research this particular aspect of innovation is also taken into uh, detailed consideration by dr kasturi rangan in the na national education policy can i can you can move to the next slide so uh, 
of course, it addresses a lot of other issues. National education pol uh, policy addresses a lot of other is issues, maybe school education, literacy, uh, um, uh, vocational education, training, all these things. But I'm just concerned because it is not, uh, the, I'm sorry for the uh, wrong spelling, research foundation. So when it comes to uh, uh, this particular aspect of research and collaboration, industry collaboration and all that, the major thing it is described in the chapter 14, this is a public document now, chapter 14 of the National Education Policy 2020. It, it envisages the national establishment of the National Research Foundation, uh, which is a, uh, of course we have in some other terms, several few small, small, uh, not small, small, very significant organizations were there, but in the, in the model of the US National Science Foundation, uh, the country is proposing the National Research Foundation. So establishment of how the research proposals can be uh, forwarded and building research capacity at all universities and colleges, government industry research linkages, extra moral funding and facilitative measures for industry support. All these five bullet points have taken as it is from the uh, report. They, of course, they have identified several, uh, several areas how these things can be uh, carried out. But when it comes to you know, the national education policy, research, industry support, and all that, one, one, what we can visualize now in, a, in our country is that we are going to have three, uh, we are going to have only one type of, only one, maybe uh, universities and universities only. And then, of course, there is, uh, Dr. Asturi Rangan and his team suggests some sort of a categorization the teaching universities teaching and research universities and the research universities. These are the three categories which he envisaged. Of course, if you just look at our, our country uh, for the last three, four, dec two to three decades, we will see that, we have, can see that there are a number of different types of universities, whether it's public universities, central universities, state universities, uh, um, single faculty universities, deemed universities, of course, uh, the, the very, the very, very weird deemed universities is there only in our country. It, it ha happened uh, as a result of because when Indian Institute of Science and Indian Agriculture Research Institute (IAR), uh, Professor Ramesh Swami was getting that. So uh, when I, Indian Agriculture Research Institute and Indian Institute of Science Bangalore, they didn't have opportunity to award degrees at this stage, and only universities can award degrees. And at that time only, the concept uh, the, in the parliament and in the UGC mentioned that they, we have to create these institutions also capable of awarding degrees and therefore the deemed they will be deemed as universities. These institutions will be deemed as universities and that is the origin of the deemed universities. Then of course in this country, you of course you know that UD, UDCT, UDCT was a university department, it became a deemed university. It, it became an autonomous department first, uh, or autonomous self-governing department first, and then it became a deemed, deemed university. And uh, now it's also considered as a deemed uh, university or national institution of impo importance with several. So, so we have different types of universities, even this wording, for example, such wording you will not find uh, in, in any other country, such, such categorization of universities. So only universities, were supposed to give universities were empowered to give degrees and uh, uh, several institutions uh, then started uh, other things then when it comes to research in this country historically we know that along with universities we have we also started the csir pre pre independent uh, or organizations uh, council of scientific and industrial research even now that it is the largest chain of uh, research laboratories in this country these were created, these research laboratories, CSIR research laboratories were created to translate the academic research which is happening, which is happening in the university system, the knowledge development and knowledge growth which is happening in the university system to translate into, I mean, useful products, useful industrial strategies and all that. That was the purpose of creation of the uh, national research laboratories and CSIR institutions. Of course, uh, Bombay, based, uh, I mean, my colleagues in this uh, color society will be knowing about the contribution of uh, Professor R. Venkataraman, who was who, 
who uh, wrote about, about the chemistry of synthetic dyes in several volumes and all that. So uh, he, uh, if you just look at the Pune University and uh, uh, National Chemical Laboratory Pune, uh, Pune Link, you will see that the university was there teaching research, basic research, and then in, and there is an organic linkage between the uh, in, uh, national laboratories and the universities. So that was the purpose. And then, of course, uh, later, of course, several institutions, if it, this is the case of several, if you just look at National Physical Laboratory, Delhi, this is also the case, Delhi University and National Physical Laboratory. Maybe Allahabad, like you will see such. So such things, now the, there are 40, almost 44 laboratories. Now it has been reduced to combining some of these things. We have also CSIR chain. Under the DBT chain, there are laboratories. Under the DST, there are direct laboratories. And uh, uh, maybe under the government specific departments also, there are uh, specific laboratories, a uh, lot of things. So the overall purpose of, uh, of all these research laboratories were to translate the basic research, which is happening in education, in university level institutions into maybe products, uh, strategies, uh, uh, in the, uh, development of industry and uh, not more. But then you see in, in these transitions during the last four decades, you will also see is even CSIR has created a university level institution of its own. Uh, you may be knowing about it. It is known as Academy of Scientific and Industrial Research. It is called ACSIR, Academy of Scientific and Industrial Research. They can, they can also, now Academy of Scientific and Industrial Research is, uh, is uh, passed by, uh, is uh, by an act of the parliament, it was passed in the parliament, this act. And they can also award degrees. They, they are also university level institution. So essentially, the basic uh, basic tenets of the university higher education institutions have been, uh, to some extent, transferred. To some not to some extent, almost fully transferred when it comes to higher degrees and research degrees and all that. And if you just look at research recognitions, research recognitions in. Uh, uh, in the country, whether it be Patnagar Prize, whether it be the Academy Fellowships, whether it be uh, the big prizes and uh, several big prizes in specific areas. If we just look at, I mean, maybe 30, 40 years back, all these prizes went to the universities, universities actually. And then, uh, because uh, from the universities, this uh, research has been taken, I mean, priority of research has been taken uh, knowingly or unknowingly from the university system, it, uh, now it is promoted research. And this is something, this is a paradox. For example, if you just look at, I started with the, 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 the Ivy League universities and foreign universities. If you just look at education and scientific research or educational research, not only scientific research, humanities, social sciences, language, you will see that a university is an institution where right from undergraduate teaching, postgraduate teaching, research, all these things should come, uh, uh, should come uh, almost concurrently, should occur almost concurrently. This is, this is the thing but which is expected out of a university. You just look at the, I mean, whether the, the, uh, uh, the early Calcutta, Un University of Calcutta, Mumbai University, Madras University, or even, of course, even now, the Banaras Hindu University. You will see all, all faculties, all departments, so, uh, whatever, whatever knowledge systems under the sun, there are uh, departments and thinkings about that. That is the concept of a university. And this is very important. This concept of a university is very, very important where uh, all sorts of interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary interactions can happen in, within the university system. And therefore, it is very important that we regain the status of the universities. That is what uh, Dr. Kasturi Rangan and his team again identified that uh, the universities and the colleges in this country, postgraduate colleges and colleges in this country should regain uh, that capabilities of research also. Uh, but, ha but having said that, it is not that easy. For example, we, when we just look at uh, we have around 50,000 colleges in this country, are recognized colleges, recognized colleges. Of course, there are also other colleges which are not recognized, 50,000 colleges and 800 universities. So uh, we are, we are, I'm not talking about ranking of the universities and all that. 
But when it comes to, for example, when it comes to the millions of students studying in colleges, you can see that um, 95 percent, more than 95, 95 percent of the uh, edu higher education system is happening in the colleges in the country. 95 percent. Only five percent is happening in in the so called in the so called university department and uh, university departments. So. Uh, what is actually happening in research, maybe transfer of knowledge and all that. Uh, there are also a large number of funding agencies. Many of these colleges, for example, many, uh, many of these university departments, you will see that they do not have undergraduate teaching. Many of the university departments, they, don't, they, don't, they didn't have undergraduate teaching, barring a few. Now, of course, we have started new institutions where this lacuna is addressed. So they do not have undergraduate teaching. They have uh, uh, postgraduate teaching and research. In many uh, universities, in university departments and university headquarters, they had only university departments which are with postgraduate departments. Even some of the departments, they didn't have even postgraduate teaching, only research. But now things are getting slowly changed. You know about Mumbai University or Pune University and all that, it's all good. But essentially what is happening is that uh, the research capabilities, the research funding, uh, research opportunities go to uh, 90 uh, these these university departments and all that. But they do these teachers, these researchers who are working in these university departments, they do not have an occasion to teach the first year undergraduate students in the university system. The first year undergraduate students in the university system are in the colleges. So essentially what is happening is that those who are having great research capabilities, research experience, those who are attending conferences, international conferences, international conferences, uh, these teachers, they do not really interact with the first year undergraduate students uh, who are coming out of the school system into the colleges. This is something which is very, um, uh, maybe very different, very, uh, but is that a strangely different, strangely unique uh, with the Indian higher education system. If you just look at uh, all universities all over the world, you will see the fellows of the Royal Societies, maybe Nobel Prize winners, uh, such eminent professors coming to the university, coming to the universities, and they will have the ma maximum number of first year undergraduate classes, even to conduct practicals and all that, you will see eminent professors, fellows of the Royal Society, uh, such people coming and teaching the first year undergraduate classes. This is a this is a, this is having a great positive impact. I mean, they are they are uh, these youngsters who are entering into the university system. They see the promises in scientific research. They see great leg legendary figures coming and teaching them. And this has happened in our IITs. For example, when we designed our IITs in, in technical education system even the brightest professors, the senior most professors, they have also the first year undergraduate classes, even in the first year engineering programs and all that. So in the colleges, what is happening? In the, on the other hand, in the colleges, they have 95%, they have undergraduate teaching, they are te or that all the teachers are teaching, but they do not have, not even 2% of the teachers in the college, they do not have an opportunity to experience the research capability. To experience the research opportunities, they will not have. They have. They are completely engrossed in teaching compulsorily, and they, so those who are teaching mainly, 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 or majority of those who are teaching, they do not have a real exposure to research or uh, knowledge transfer, but they are. They have to teach. Those who have. I mean, experience, those who have research opportunities, those who have research capabilities, I mean, research provisions and all that, working in the university departments, select, select university laboratories and all that, they have, uh, they, they, of course, they get the exposure of research, but they are in very small in number, but they do not really teach the undergraduate students. This is a real paradox. It is very important that these, these I mean, uh, students who are entering into the university, they should also be exposed to the teaching, uh, to the research and knowledge transfer, industry interaction, all these things. So this is something, this, is, this issue has 
we have been discussing this we have been telling this uh, as teachers we have been telling this uh, we were um, we pushed. but this issue has been addressed again by uh, dr kasturi rangan in the report and therefore it is mentioned that the, the, the colleges should also for example those the colleges should also have uh, some sort of a uh, re building research capacity at all universities and colleges how far is this realistic how far it is realistic that is that is a real challenge building research capacity at all universities and colleges in this country even the state affiliating universities they do not have much of a research capability when even even now uh, central universities they do have uh, when it comes to colleges 50000 colleges how uh, research capacity can be built in so these are really uh, great challenges of course they suggest lot of things but they, they are really good uh, whether doable maybe de definitely doable systematically step wise we are do doable can i have the next slide please so that is the point i wanted to emphasize how we can just look at research capability so importance of first of all there is a needing need of building a culture of research in the colleges that is the point i mentioned for example uh, when i was in germany uh, i uh, i have seen uh, nobel prize winners coming to the laboratory uh, of course chemistry uh, coming to the laboratory they come with the uh, what is that uh, they take all these chemicals from the store with the, with this small shopping wagon like thing they bring the chemicals and they do the practicals they they show the practice i have seen that um, undergrad um, first year diploma, of course in germany they call diploma chemi chemical and all diploma is the is the name for the degree uh, there. so they teach them so we have to cult build a culture in of the colleges in the undergraduate college research culture so that means there has to be there should not be a differentiation between the, the teaching teachers capabilities or teachers provisions or, te or teachers opportunities in colleges and universities it is a it's a herculean task but we have to build, build uh, a culture of sustain in the colleges and of course there has to be a productive environment in the college what is in the in the college as i mentioned earlier they are all engaged in complete teaching conducting the examinations on time now you see the challenges conducting the examination declaring the results and this is the challenge and that is the and they, it is practically impossible for them to even to look at uh, the research schemes research possibilities and all that <coughs> so the leadership matters uh, so we have to create an ultimate but but in summary what i want to say is uh, when this particular point is mentioned we have to just mention how to create a research culture in 50000 colleges and large number of maybe uh, out of the 800 universities maybe uh, we can call only 10 or 15 research universities in the country the rest of them are even now uh, not that well endowed in research so this is very important can i have the next slide go oh, quickly so so research activities determine the status and quality of the institution so for example we call we, talk, we think about the national institute of uh, nir of ranking again we talk about research i was also getting the national assessment and accreditation council of the country if when it comes to research assessment there is uh, we have a weightage for research in colleges we have weightage for research in universities which are different uh, uh, weightage for research in single faculty institutions these are all different type so here, here again there is a differentiation so but research activities there is of course some percentage maybe 20% or 30% per, 20% uh, um, weightage is given for research activities to determine the status of the college how we, they can achieve it and of course there is no doubt that uh, research contribute to economic and social development and also it is very important that we communicate research and uh, we have also when uh, the autonomous colleges systems that started uh, in in tamil nadu almost 60 60 years uh, 60 years ago the autonomous colleges came in a very big way but even then they are they are tied up with some, uh, several uh, several uh, strings uh, from uh, statutory agencies uh, but but it, it stood the test of time many of the some, many of the autonomous colleges come in came in a big way so we have to uh, we have to identify research as a core element in the mission of a vision of higher education and this this needs lot of uh, support lot of support the 
of course the number of the figures and the millions of millions of uh, cro uh, crores and crores of rupees required for this thing uh, they have mentioned the policy will come into that later can i have the next slide next so uh, we have to create new ideas knowledge skills and technologies through excellence in research cutting for, uh, creating fresh opportunities for individuals and society at large so if you just look at research as a whole we of course basically when it comes to phd research uh, most of the researchers who are taking phd are the teachers from the affiliated colleges they have uh, originally they had a faculty improvement program they have fulfilled they have to fulfill this particular research and then only they will and get a higher uh, career advance in a higher level in the career advancement scheme maybe an associate professor or, or something so as a as a compulsion as some sort of a compulsion uh, for promotion uh, the phd research is given uh, and uh, of course in other institutions post doctoral research for example we all know that our own children uh, after phd they go for post doctoral research after msc also they go for research in out uh, countries post doctoral research and industry support of for post doctoral research is a very very important area but when it comes to post doctoral research and mission mission oriented research nothing big is happening in our universities of course when it comes to mission oriented research we have only two great missions in this country one is the space mission uh, the isro and the other is the uh, atomic energy commission and of course you have seen that this they have they have been created in a mission mode and even now uh, they are uh, they are topping and this has not been happening in the higher education research in the country and therefore it has it has definitely affected and then uh, collaborative research not just uh, collaborative research with industry collaborative research within uh, within the university or within the research with uh, from among the researchers also it is not happening for example uh, uh, we have uh, in in very specific areas we have individual researchers but if we want to give create a big impact an industrial impact or a developmental impact based on research it is not that if you can complete their project within 3 years and within as part of a phd you can achieve something big development and all that phd phd by definition is only a training for research so if you want to achieve something very big uh, target very big Uh, you have to have some sort of a mission to it you have to identify core areas and maybe 30 or 40 people uh, of, of in that area they should work together for achieving this mission and it should not be it should be maybe you have to identify by uh, this particular scheme for a period of 10 years or 15 years that is the that is the type of type of strategy we have to develop not just uh, a, a scholar a scheme for 3 years and then Uh, giving a few lakhs of rupees in, 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 in providing this scheme and then every six months asking for progress progress report and all that nothing nothing growing is you can train researchers but if you want to really achieve to achieve targets and uh, achieve a mission and uh, achieve a real create a, de a real development impact you should have several people several researchers working together on a on a common pro problem and in this exercise you can train any number of i mean researchers in this particular mission mission project you can uh, try train any number of uh, youngsters uh, for research and all that that is not happening in a very big way uh, if you just look at researchers going to abroad in the universities so in, and if you just look at major research great uh, scientists nobel laureates and all that you will see 30 40 or maybe 50 60 people working in their laboratories maybe that um, uh, half of them will be post doctoral fellows and if you just look at the list of post doctoral fellows working uh, uh, with the, many of these nobel laureates and all that you will see a large number of indians large number of indians working as post doctoral fellows with them uh, the, of course as an organic chemist i remember it's, uh, herbert brown hc brown uh, pardew university he had I mean, very eminent people from india if of course they are all professors here students they were all they they all work for it so if you just look at the publication the publications and the very high pub, i mean quality publications of or for them you will find large number of indian names large number of uh, scholars who have gone from india working for them and achieving great things but they could not lead 
a project. They could not lead a project and therefore, and they are equally capable. They are equally capable, but they are not getting an opportunity to lead. And this is being provided by uh, great institutions outside. And why this is not happening, of course, even uh, you have also great institutions. Why this is not happening in India even now, that is a challenge. What I, what I mean to say is that we have individual research excellence is happening uh, in our institutions, but uh, this individual research excellences has to be converted into institutional research excellences which have long-term impact. And that is possible only through effective uh, interaction with industry and all that. Of course, there are I mean, successful models of industry interaction. Uh, in Germany, uh, the Gesellschaft Deutsche Commission Industry, that is the Society of uh, German Chemistry. They conduct the Akema, lot of exhibitions and all that in Frankfurt, uh, a lot, lot of industrial exhibitions and all that. Similarly, in all, all professional fields, whether it be Royal Society, in London, whether it be, of course, um, of course I, will be con I will be saying something about chemistry because I'm a chemist by profession. But if you just look at American chemicals, just as the Color Society is doing this small capacity building programs, which are very relevant. If you just look at the American Chemical Society and its various divisions, you will see large number of industry collaborations, uh, joint programs, certificate programs, even offering of programs for um, long term on a long term level, and even supporting basic research, industry supporting basic research in a, a, a very very big way it is happening. So this is and and this has to be uh, on a mission oriented way. This is not happening. Of course, one can give some fellowship uh, for three years and all that. These are all these are all things which can we can do, but ultimate great change, uh, giant leap can happen only by such mission-oriented approaches. So when it comes to research, we talk about quality of research publications. It's a big business now. For example, quality of research publications, impact factor, uh, citation analysis, uh, uh, all these things are now, uh, of course, people are uh, uh, just looking at um, this for promotion and all that, and therefore also large untoward, undesirable trends happening in, in publications. For example, fake journals. The, of course, we are uh, uh, one of the largest research community or education community in the whole world. Uh, if you just look at the nature, the, the highest research journal, uh, every year publishes uh, the quality and uh, quality and excellence of the various journals published by uh, different countries. Every year they publish nature, nature and science. And of course, it's, of course, it's a self-criticism on me also. Uh, we, we see that the largest number of fake journals are coming from two cities in India, um, uh, Ghaziabad and Meerut. Largest number of fake journals. Even for example, the journal started by Sir C. V. Raman, Current Science. They have just given that current, current science name to another journal, a fake journal, which has, which has nothing to do with this current science. And now the original current science, which is even now published very effectively by Indian Academy of Sciences of Bangalore, just gives a, a notification every issue that that other current science is not our science. So this is also happening. For example, fake publications and all that. So quality, uh, top journals, top publications, impact factor, all these things are very important. And therefore, uh, ethics, uh, integrity, all these things are very important in carrying out research. That is, that is also a challenge. So why this transfer of knowledge why these big collaborations are not happening, maybe to some extent we are uh, answerable uh, because of some of these issues. Uh, can I have the next slide? The next next slide, can, can you just? Can this, I have the next? Yeah. Sir, this one or the previous one? No, next, next. Okay. This one? No, next. One more. After this. Nothing? This one, oh. sir? No, this is the one I'm, I was telling all the time. Just, just next one. See, this is the first one, second, third, 
fourth, fifth, sixth. Ah, yeah, and this is seven. Can you go go to the next next one? Because I uh, yeah, this is the eighth page. Okay, so this is so we, we have to just look at the quality of the uh, research publication, and uh, quality of the research journals, and also the publication mechanism, rigorous mechanisms have to be there in uh, ensuring the uh, quality of the publications, and then. Uh, we should definitely uh, think about uh, how exactly we can change our uh, uh, content of the curriculum and all that, depending upon the requirements of the industry. When I was introduced about this lecture, uh, Mr. Manik Sadunke was telling about the possibilities of. As of now, what is happening that is that only in engineering or engineering related subjects, this particular uh, collaboration, even if it is happening, some training is happening, it is only happening in the uh, engineering and related areas. But it is very important that we should also concentrate on the basic sciences, humanities, and social sciences. It, uh, we, we may say, we may tell that it is, it is not that relevant and all that to the industry, but it's very, very important. For example, if, uh, if you just look at the big, big industries all over the top industries all over the world, you will see that they are also supporting uh, the research in humanities, basic sciences, and social sciences. And when it comes to applied research, industrial research, and all that, of course, in our country also, we started, for example, originally it was chemistry. Chemistry is even now there, very active. And then people started about chemistry, applied chemistry. Similarly, physics, applied physics. Even um, uh, mathematics, mathematics and applied mathematics. It's very important. Of course, we have to just look at not just the pure sciences. We have to just look at the application of all that. But without a clear understanding, without a clear understanding of the basic sciences, you cannot have any applied science. Uh, there is only knowledge and knowledge only. If we know, we also know how to apply. There is nothing like knowledge and applied knowledge which are separate. If you know, you will apply that. If you know, uh, and also if you know uh, the uh, purpose of that knowledge which you are gathering, for what purpose it is going to be applied, then you will also apply it. If you do not know properly, I think you, you will fail in the application also. And therefore, importance of basic sciences, importance of basic knowledge is very much. Uh, and uh, you will see that uh, very, I mean, we, we, I have one, one or two very clear examples in, from our own country. Uh, of course, uh, there is a professor, Professor Engarajan in um, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. He was long term uh, professor and head of the Department of Inorganic and Physical Chemistry. You can imagine very eminent people, even Nobel laureates were there in the Indian Institute of Science. Uh, he was head of the uh, Department of Inorganic and Physical Chemistry, which is so it's the first department in the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. He was professor and head the Department of Chemistry, but, uh, uh, Department of Physical Chemistry, but he was an MSc in Mathematics, just an MSc in Mathematics from Presidency College. But he was professor of uh, Chemistry and professor of uh, Theoretic, and he was a Great theoretical chemistry, great theoretical chemistry, quantum chemistry, I don't know, professor of mathematics. And then Dr. Angarajan, after, not doctor, he is not PhD. So uh, Professor Angarajan became the director of an CSIR institute uh, in Karekudi. It is called Central Electrochemical Research Institute, SICRI. You just imagine chemistry and SICRI is an applied research institute, the Electrochemical Research Institute. He became the director of the, the physical chemistry and the theoretical chemistry, which he uh, imbibed, which he got through his mathematical knowledge and that, that he can apply, uh, he can, uh, he could apply to electrochemistry and other things. He became the director of the Central Electrochemical Research Institute. Why I mentioned this particular example? This shows the importance of the basic, un, basic uh, thorough understanding of the basic subjects. And then, knowing the application areas. Know, we have to know the application areas. And then if you know the application areas and if you have thorough knowledge of the basic sciences, you will also know 
how to apply. So if you have knowledge, you will also know how to apply that knowledge. That's very important. So just differentiation, just by creating applied branch of any basic science, it is not going to serve the real purpose of applicate, uh, applied knowledge. And therefore, there has to be effective support for the basic science also. And if you just look at uh, pre predominant institutions, prominent institutions all over the world, they have all supported basic sciences in a very big way. And then they uh, gave them opportunities. Those trained them opportunities to go delve into the applied areas and then the application uh, So this is very, very important. So vocation, focus on vocational orientation is very important. And then uh, our in our system, the, what is the most uh, uh, difficult thing is that even in the so-called very big universities, central universities, state universities, and the colleges in the public system. Uh, we have large number of vacancies, 40%, 50% vacancies. There are colleges, there are 20% of the colleges, which I mentioned, which have only 100, stu 100 students and maybe one or two teachers. That is the type of recognized colleges in the country, 20% 20, 20 or 50,000. So we have to just look at, now we have to draw, in enhance the gross enrollment ratio, a uh, number of uh, facilities have to be created. And uh, now, of course, we see the technological applications of uh, teaching. Uh, of course, we are, every day we are engaged in online uh, teaching and learning now. Uh, of course, we know that ultimately technology cannot teach. Only teachers can teach. Whatever we say, technology cannot teach. Only teachers can teach. Of course, teachers have to be, uh, teachers have to uh, be abreast with the appropriate technologies and how they should know how this technology can be applied and all that. So it is very important that we should concentrate on teaching. We should, uh, we should, we should concentrate on teachers. We should invest on teachers. We should invest on capacity building of teachers in the right context. And these are all very important. And this is also maybe uh, some sort of an industry academy interaction. Uh, you know, in, in um, uh, other universities in develop, uh, highly developed countries, there is a, there is a possibility of uh, spending um, uh, after five years or six years, one year in, this, in industry, I mean, paid. Uh, similarly, there are also opportunities in other uh, universities, almost regular pattern, in, in a very regular pattern. They can, uh, they can, uh, in different industry, R&D scientists, industry experts, they can spend, uh, sabbat, they can spend uh, maybe six months, one year like that in the academy also. This type of interaction, of course, maybe in selected, uh, maybe one out of 10,000, it may be happening somewhere here and there. Even that, even that I'm not very sure. I have I traveled far and wide in this country in institutions, not happening in a big way. Maybe we have to think about uh, how we can, uh, we, somebody from the academy system can go to the industry, maybe work with professional societies like the Color Society. Maybe some, some of your people can come to the universities and colleges, maybe for a short time. And then these are the things which are, and these are, these are yielded. When the CSIR created institutions like uh, the CSIR labs and all that, these things were happening. I was mentioning about Professor Ven uh, Venkat Raman, who uh, wrote several volumes on synthetic dyes. Uh, maybe you, can, you have heard about one T.R. Sheshatri, in, who worked in natural products chemistry, uh, maybe uh, in Delhi, who had the largest number of publications in, the, in, in organic natural products, plant products. Uh, even now, nobody has... Uh, but many of the, they, they didn't worry about um, patenting or anything, but there, several of these things are being used by people all over the world. So we have, we had very prominent researchers uh, and teachers, and they had, they had equally worked with industry also. For, I, I, I remember an organic chemist, T.R. Govindajari in Presidency College, very eminent organic chemist, T.R. Govindajari, he went to, what is that? Uh, Amrudanjan, Amrudan, there is, there is a, uh, another with, after a term and how much he has contributed uh, to the development of um, uh, several pharmaceutically important compounds. There are a large number, maybe uh, Asima Chatterjee in, in Calcutta, uh, T.R. Sheshatri in Delhi, uh, T.R. Uh, Govindajari in uh, Chennai, Madras. Several, several such people. Just of course, I, of course, when I say all these things, it's chemistry or not, but in other fields also, there are large. Of course, when we talk about industry uh, interaction and all that, 
आचार्य प्रफुल्ल चंद्र रे पीसी रे पीसी रे ऑफकोर्स द फर्स्ट इंडस्ट्री फार्मास्यूटिकल इंडस्ट्री इन इन दि कंट्री फॉर एक्सापल वेदर इट बी इंपीरियर केमिकल इंडस्ट्रीज ऑल दीज थिंग्स वेर स्टार्टेड बाई हिम सो दैट टाइप ऑफ इफेक्टिव कोलाबरेशन वेदर इट बी इन इन पुणे वेदर इट बी इन कलकत्ता वेदर इट बी इन चेन्नई वेदर इट बी इन डेली वेदर इट बी इन नंदे सारी बेरोरा सेवरल सच वेरी very celebrated examples of effective collaboration between industry and academia between professors entering into industry as happened these are all very small numbers compared to the size of this country and that is where i uh, request uh, my, my colleagues from the academia and uh, my colleague my colleagues and friends from the industry work together maybe Uh, not compromising the objectives of the industry sector or the academic sector to put their heads together to work on industry academic collaboration in in training students in in providing advanced capacity building of teachers maybe developing laboratories providing scholarships institute maybe post retirement uh, industry uh, placement uh, in in new institutions and how are we going to uh, provide these colleges and several thousands of universities the right kind of human resources trained in research and industrial training and it is only through uh, effective utilization of human resources both from the industry and the academy we can achieve even 10% of what is what dr kasturi rangan expects in his national research foundation which is there is there are 30 40 pages about national research foundation industry academy and linkage and all that i think we will definitely have uh, some other focused interaction on very specific points which are achievable it is expected that uh, industries contribute to it similarly academy also changes changes its pattern of developing curriculum and all that the conservative ways of looking at it and maybe looking at uh, uh, transformative changes in in our approaches to higher education and research and industry collaboration thank you very much of course i took more time uh, i thought of this mentioning it in the thank you thank you very much for giving me this opportunity i will of course i will i have already shared my uh, thing there, there are few more points in the several vocational orientation and all that i don't want to just read all these things but this is the gist of the thing i wanted to say thank you very much thank you uh i think yes uh you can you can have questions if you i don't know what is the time limitation and all that so we started chetan ha ji yes sir ha yeah. uh, ha so i think sir uh, thank, yeah, yeah well, thank you very much uh, for a great uh, lecture in the great detail and now i will uh, invite sri rohan tawre our honorary joint secretary for word of thanks can you unmute chetan uh, yeah. can you see that he is unmuted okay. please ensure wait, that wait wait i'll do that uh, i cannot see rohan is he logged in in the name of rohan rohan tawre yeah i think the name must be different because i can't see rohan tawre okay i will unmute everybody wait yeah you unmute everybody i will call uh, him yeah. Rohan Sohan Daikem, you check Sohan Daikem. Chetan. हाँ जी, I I have allowed un, uh, to unmute himself, so he can unmute himself. Okay, okay. Now you can hear me. Am I audible now? Yeah, yes, yeah. Rohan. You are audible now. Yes, Rohan. Please go ahead. Okay. Some, uh, some uh, technical issues, yeah. Uh, good evening, all of you. It's such a lovely lecture, sir. Uh, it's my privilege to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion of memories of Professor Ena Kamath lecture to you, uh, Professor uh, V N Rajshekaran Pillai, the Vice Chancellor of Somya Vidyalaya, Mumbai University, were most valuable invited guests. 
on behalf of color society i extend a very heartly vote of thanks to you sir for sharing your valuable knowledge with us today we would like like to propose a memento to our chief guest uh, professor pillai uh, please memento please uh this will be handed over to you uh, by our committee members at your workplace or office as per the convenience sir uh this uh sir now we uh, once again we thank you for a small uh, token of gratitude and finally i also extend my vote of thanks to all my color society committee members guest attendees and students of the enormous cooperation in the organization for this event thank you so much and please take care thank you sir thank you all yeah any any uh, yeah. uh so your voice is not coming i think you are mute Yeah, yeah. Chetan, Chetan, ah, 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 Please, please unmute, sir. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chetan, you unmute all. You yeah, unmute yeah. All. I, I have done that, sir. And all now right. everybody can unmute themselves. Yeah, you mute all. I yeah. uh, end the meetings now. Oh. I think. Hmm? Okay, sir. So, uh, shall I end the meeting now? Yes. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.